Chapter 1081 Hope she loses money in business. Leng Shouting indeed won many jade raw materials from other people's hands. However, because Leng Shouting bid the same way as Ganing, many people turned to look at him because he stood right beside Ganing. They believed that he must be Leng Shouting. Some people thought that he might have bid on behalf of Ganing. Lu Wai Wai and Tang Yaxin had the same idea, so they felt utterly uncomfortable, like Leng Shouting had disappointed them. They were jealous of Ganing. So they disliked everything Leng Shouting did for her. What's wrong? Cheesy you asked Tang Yaxin. Nothing, I just think the girl named Ganing could lose a lot of money if there isn't jade in the jade raw materials that she won, Tang Yaxin said. Hearing that, Cheesy you said nothing. He also hoped that Ganing could lose money in business. I don't think she can make money by doing this. Ayumi Yamaguchi said. Although Zibiying was the one who had offended her, Ganing was Zibiying's friend, so she hated Ganing as well. Saying that, she gave Zibiying and Ganing a hostile glare. Zibiying turned to look at her at once, and showed obvious disdain. She wasn't afraid of Ayumi Yamaguchi at all. Ayumi Yamaguchi was furious when Zibiying gave her a provocative smile. She couldn't wait to tear Zibiying to pieces. Ayumi. Don't worry. I promise that I'll pay her back for you, Shoutaman Amino said to comfort Ayumi Yamaguchi. The hatred he held for Zibiying deep end. Tomorrow was the last lady of the public jade bid, so he had to figure out a way to get revenge on her before that. He wished that they were in country R right now so that he could easily punish Zibiying. Although Shoutaman Amino had failed once, he didn't think that his dirty trick was already exposed and he kept sending other people to follow Zibiying. Zibiying and her bodyguards were clearly aware of it, but they were waiting for a good opportunity to solve this problem. She wasn't a weak girl, and even got excited about it. Chizu and Tang Yaxin had no intention to get involved in this mess. It took a long time for the hostess to finish reading the numbers of the jade raw materials that Leng Shouting won. The Jiang family and the Lu family had bid for many of the same jade raw materials as Leng Shouting and they felt quite disappointed. Dot. After the result was revealed, they could go to move the jade raw materials. There were two ways to deal with the jade raw materials, one was to move them back home, and the other was to cut the jade out and sell the jade. The host of the public jade bid would arrange trucks to help them move the jade raw materials back home. It wasn't convenient for Ganing to put them into the telepathic eye space now. If she wanted to cut jade out of them, she could sell the jade at the auction that afternoon. If she wanted to bring the jade away, she had to finish the legal procedures. There was a lot of jade in the jade raw materials, so Ganing decided to move it back to City Teng first. It only took two hours of driving from Yangin to City Teng. Ganing wasn't interested in other people's results. She simply wanted to join the auction which would be held tomorrow. Therefore, Ganing excused herself from Zibiying, then went to pick up her jade raw materials. Seeing Ganing walking away, Jang Dikan knew that she was going to move the jade raw materials back to City Teng. Nobody was willing to leave so many valuable jade raw materials in the warehouse. Dot. Ganing borrowed a large truck because she had too many jade raw materials. She checked them before the truck was loaded, and none of them had been replaced. No one knew whether there was jade in them so nobody had replaced any of them. Although the public jade bid was held by the government of Burma, it didn't mean that it was totally fair and honest. After all, many people were jealous of Ganing. About an hour later, Ganing and the others left for City Teng. She called Zheng Peng on the way and told him to prepare a truck at the border. Two hours later, the truck left Burma. Zheng Peng and two staff members were already waiting for them. They knew that Ganing would bring a lot of jade raw materials back but they were still amazed by the amount. Zheng Peng knew that there must be many pieces of jade in those jade raw materials. After moving the jade raw materials onto the truck arranged by Zheng Peng, Ganing and Leng Shouting followed him back to City Teng. Chapter 1080 Two bid for the jade. Ganing stayed in the warehouse for a few minutes, then went back to Burma with Leng Shouting. It took a long time for the hostess to finish reading the list of jade raw materials that Ganing and Leng Shouting won while others only won dozens of jade raw materials. When it was about 1 p.m., the hostess finally finished reading all the numbers. The Jiang family won about 20 jade raw materials, including some that Ganing left for them. The Lu family won the same amount of jade raw materials, 
but there were only a few pieces of low-quality jade in them. The Jiang family and the Lu family mainly came to strike up a relationship with their potential clients and partners in business, so they didn't care much about the results. Zhao Yifeng won 10 jade raw materials in all, and five of them had jade inside. All of them chose to send their jade raw materials back, while they would stay in Burma for the next day's auction. Dot. At 2 p.m., some people began to cut jade out of their jade raw materials, but there wasn't much jade of high quality. That being the case, people began to bid crazily for a violet jade once it was cut out. The being came there for fun, but she couldn't sit still when Ayumi Yamaguchi joined the auction. Dong Fenzu was also competing for the violet jade. The violet jade was covered in dense magical power, but she couldn't absorb it with her eyes like Ning usually did so she had to buy it. After absorbing the magical power, she could make jewelry with it and sell it. The violet jade was the size of half a football, and someone offered a million dollars for it at the very beginning. 1.5 million dollars, Ayumi Yamaguchi said. 1.6 million dollars, Zabiying said. 1.7 million dollars, Dong Fenzi said. Dot. As the price of the violet jade went up, more and more people stopped bidding for it. In the end, only Ayumi Yamaguchi, Zabiying and Dong Fengzi were still bidding for it. Five million dollars, Ayumi Yamaguchi said. Although it wasn't the highest price the Violet Jade could reach, it was almost there. If the price went higher, it wouldn't be a profitable deal. Five point one million dollars, Zabiying said. She was challenging Ayumi Yamaguchi. Zabiying enjoyed it when Ayumi Yamaguchi was mad at her. She didn't lack money at all. If the price was too high, she would probably quit. Five point two million dollars, Dong Fengzi said. Ayumi Yamaguchi and Zabiying were competing against one another, but Dong Fengzi really wanted the jade. Dong Fengzi knew that they were enemies but couldn't stop them from raising the price. 5.3 million dollars, Ayumi Yamaguchi said. 5.4 million dollars, Zabiying said. Dong Fengzi stopped bidding this time. She didn't give up, but wanted to see how high the price was reaching. She was unwilling to waste too much money on it. 5.5 million dollars, Ayumi Yamaguchi said. 5.6 million dollars, Zabiying said. Dot. 6 million dollars. Ayumi Yamaguchi said. 6.2 million dollars, Zabiying said. 7 million dollars. Ayumi Yamaguchi lost her patience. Well, fine, it's yours. Zabiying decided to quit. She didn't think it was embarrassing, because the jade wasn't worth that amount of money in any case. Ayumi Yamaguchi paid 7 million dollars for it in the end, which wasn't a profitable deal. You. Ayumi Yamaguchi was furious. But she still laughed at Zabiying. You simply can't afford it. She didn't lack money either. 7.2 million dollars. Dong Fengzu interrupted them. Hearing that, Zabiying was surprised and looked at Dong Fengzu. She thought that Ayumi Yamaguchi was stupid to pay so much money for a piece of jade, but didn't expect that there would be another person willing to pay a higher price for it. 7.3 million dollars. Ayumi Yamaguchi said without thinking further. 7.4 million dollars, Dong Fengzi said with determination. Ayumi Yamaguchi opened her mouth, but said nothing. She knew that it was meaningless to raise the price now. She competed against Zabiying not because she liked jade. In fact, compared with jade, she liked diamonds more. She bid for the jade only because Shoutamine Mino wanted it. Shoutamine Mino had told her that the jade was worth only six million dollars. If the price was higher than six million dollars, she could give it up. She didn't do that because Zabiying was unwilling to quit. Since Zabiying already quit now, there was no need for Ayumi Yamaguchi to compete for it. Ayumi Yamaguchi looked to Shoutamine Mino for his opinion, and Shoutamine Mino shook his head. So Ayumi Yamaguchi stopped bidding. Chapter 1083 Another Round As a result, Dong Fengzu paid $7.4 million for the Violet Jade. Miss Yamaguchi, since you're interested in the jade, why didn't you keep on bidding for it? Zabiying crossed her arms on her chest, looking at Ayumi Yamaguchi with arrogance. It's none of your business, Ayumi Yamaguchi said in anger. Fine. Zabiying shrugged. Within a short time, 
Another jade of the Confederate Rose type was cut out. The being stared at Ayumi Yamaguchi with a fake smile on her face. It was obvious that she would compete against her once more if she joined in the bid. Although this jade wasn't as valuable as the Violet Jade, it was covered in magical power too, so Dongfeng Zhe focused on it as well. However, as long as the being and Ayumi Yamaguchi joined in the bid, its price would definitely be absurdly high. Shoutamine Mino was also aware of this problem, so he bid for the jade this time. Nevertheless, it made no difference in the being's eyes. She wouldn't stop competing against them anyway. Shoutamine Mino was mad, but couldn't do anything about it. In the end, Dongfeng got the jade of the Confederate Rose type at a very high price. Shoutamine Mino had to give up again. Dongfeng hated to see them because they showed up wherever a piece of jade was cut out. Zhu, they're so terrible, Wu Shunhui complained. He didn't say it loudly, but in a low voice. Dongfeng Zhu disliked their behavior, but she had to accept it because she really needed jade with magical power. Because most jade raw materials with jade of high quality were taken by Ganing, there were only a few pieces with good jade left. Dongfeng Zhu wouldn't buy jade of low quality because the magical power was weak around it. If it was possible, Dongfeng Zhu would prefer to buy jade of the highest level. Shoutamine Mino, however, didn't have a high standard for the jade. Chi Ziyu and Tang Yaxin didn't follow Shoutamine Mino around the hall, because they didn't want to compete against him. That would damage their relationship. After a while, the being lost interest and went back to the hotel for a rest. Once she was gone, Dongfeng Zhu felt relieved. Without their cutthroat competition, she could pay less for the jade. Shoutamine Mino was also relaxed. She's so hateful. Ayumi Yamaguchi said to the being's back. Ayumi, I promise I'll teach her a lesson. Shoutamine Mino said to comfort her, but he already said that countless times without actually doing something about it. Ayumi Yamaguchi had enough of it, so she vented with anger at Shoutamine Mino. How? They're so good at fighting and the public jade bid will be over tomorrow. We probably won't see them again. Shoutamine Mino didn't know what to say, because it was the truth. Shouter, I understand you want to pay her back for me, but don't say that again before you really take action, Ayumi Yamaguchi said. All right. Shoutamine Mino understood that Ayumi Yamaguchi was in a bad mood. Dot. When Gunning and Leng Shouting got back into Burma, it was already 5 p.m. So they directly went back to the hotel. Gunning contacted Zhe Being on the way, and found out that she was in the hotel at that moment. Since they were all in the hotel, they decided to gather together for dinner that evening. At 6 p.m., they went downstairs to the dining hall. Gunning, when will you go back home? Zhe Being asked Gunning. When the public jade bid is over tomorrow, Gunning said. Will you fly back to City B? Zhe Being asked. Nope, I'll go to City Teng first then fly to the capital the next day. After that I'll go back to City B, Gunning said. I'll go with you. The being got excited. I want to have fun in the capital too. Sure, but I don't promise that I'll be able to tour with you by then, Gunning said. It's not a big deal. I have friends in the capital too, and I can take good care of myself. We can share a meal together when you're free, the being said. Great. Gunning said. She also wanted to spend more private time with Leng Shouting. During the dinner, Gunning received a call from a stranger, which she answered. Chapter 1084 Mugzuxing calls for help. Hi, who's this? Gunning asked. Hi, Miss Gu, I'm Mugzuxin, and I'm so sorry to bother you now, but I have no choice. Mugzuxin apologized to her the moment Gunning answered his call. Mugzuxin had lain in bed for a couple of days before he had gotten better. It was hard for him to accept the fact that his biological son had schemed against him. During these days, the Mu family was in a big crisis, and his company could barely stay afloat. Mugzuxin always wanted to find Mu Yi and tell him to stop, but he failed to find him. He had no idea where Mu Yi lived or worked. Therefore, he contacted Gunning. Gunning was surprised to hear from Mugzuxin. May I help, Mr. Mu? Gunning was polite. In fact, she clearly knew why Mugzuxin called her. It must be because of K. Well, I need to talk to Mu Yi right now, but he's nowhere to be found. Can you please help me? 
Mu Xuxin asked, he didn't know whether Gunning was aware of Mu Yi's grudge against the Mu family, so he didn't mention it. I'm sorry that I can't make the decision for him, but I can help you by asking for his opinion, Gunning said. If K was willing to give Mu Xuxin his phone number, it would be fine. Well, Mu Xuxin understood that Mu Yi would refuse to meet him. However, he was unwilling to give up. Great, thank you so much, Miss Gu. Although it was meaningless to talk to Mu Yi now, Mu Xuxin still struggled. He thought that Mu Yi might stop attacking him if he begged him. Mu Xuxin loved money more than anything else, and he was willing to do anything to save his company. He was reluctant to lose his luxurious life. Dot. After hanging up the call with Mu Xuxin, Gunning called K. Obviously, K was unwilling to meet Mu Xuxin, and he also apologized to Gunning for bothering her. Gunning didn't actually mind it, since K wasn't willing to do it. She didn't insist, and she asked him about the game company. Kay told her that he hadn't heard any information from the official department yet. Hearing that, Leng Shouting said to Gunning, Ning Ning, do you need my help? Sure, Kay just made a game, and we registered a game company named High Speed Tech. Once the official department gives us the business license, we can release it, Gunning said. Kay, a game company? Is he the famous hacker, Kay? Zabiying joined their discussion. Although K was just a title, Zabiying thought of the hacker, K, when they talked about computer programs. Nobody in the internet industry used the same title as K. Yeah, you're right, Gunning said. Do you know him? Not really, we just met once before, Zabiying said. He helped us with the system of my family's house. What, is he working for you now? It wasn't easy to hire K. He was a handsome young man but unfortunately he had to spend most of his life in a wheelchair. Yes, Gunning answered, Jesus, it's so unbelievable. With Kay's help, nobody would dare to attack the computer system of your company, Zabiying exclaimed. It was the truth. In an era of technology, the computer system of a company was very important. Moreover, with Kay's help, Gunning was able to find any confidential secrets she wanted to know. Kay was also good at making money for her. Once the game company was established, they could make tons of money every day. Dot. After that, Gunning called Mu Xuxin. She told him that Mu Yi didn't want to meet with him. It wasn't a surprising answer, but Mu Xuxin still felt disappointed. Miss Gu, would you please help me by stopping Mu Yi from attacking my business? I know I've hurt him deeply but I've learned my lesson. Mu Xuxin turned to Gunning for help. Mr. Mu, I'm just an outsider. I have no right to interfere in your family affairs, Gunning said. Miss Gu. Mu Xuxin understood that Gunning was unwilling to help him. I'm sorry, Mr. Mu, but I have to go. Gunning interrupted him and ended the call. Ever since she found out about Kay's relationship with Mu Xuxin, she didn't have a good impression of the Mu family. Besides, because of what Mu Wenki did, she hated them. She would punish Mu Xuxin if K didn't do it. Therefore, she had no sympathy for the Mu family. Mu Xuxin deserved it. Chapter 1085 Ma Jing Shan. Mu Xuxin felt cornered now. He had stayed in the capital for many days now, and he had to go back to City B to manage his company. After dinner, Zi Being left before Gunning and Leng Shouting to leave them some private time and space. Gunning and Leng Shouting then went to have a walk. When they walked through the hall, they heard people talking about them. Look at the young man and the girl over there. They won over 600 J draw materials. Aren't they afraid to lose money? I heard that President Ma had made many of the same bids as them which means there could be jade in most of the jade raw materials that they won. Even if you don't believe them, you should believe in President Ma's ability. President Ma's full name was Ma Jing Shan, and he was the vice president of the Jade Association in County Yin, Province Yun, where jade raw materials were abundant. The Ma family was the largest jade raw material provider in County Yin, and its business had a similar size as well as assets as the three biggest jade raw material providers in City Teng. However, Ma Jingshan held a higher social status than Jiang Dikan. Ma Jingshan was the well-known king of stone gambling in the jade industry of Province Yan, because he was able to cut jade out of most of the jade raw materials he picked. Once Tang Aining appeared, people were distracted by her, and gave her the title of Queen of Jade. Nevertheless, Tang Aining seldom showed up in public, 
so many people hadn't seen her in real life before. They thought that Tang Aining would attend this public jade bid in Burma, but she didn't show up. Actually, she did show up but as Gunning. Gunning hadn't heard of the President Ma before, but he sounded like an important figure. After hearing their discussion, Gunning and Leng Shouting left the hotel, but they kept on talking about them. What? Do you mean that there is a lot of jade in the jade raw materials they won? I think it's highly possible, and they could win a fortune. Hearing that, others all agreed. Dot. At this time, Ma Jingshan was dining with some familiar jewelry businessmen and they talked about the jade bit too. Ma Jingshan was 55 this year, but was still full of energy. Well, I actually also hoped to meet the Queen of Jade today, but I didn't see her. Ma Jingshan was very disappointed. He wasn't jealous of Tang Aining at all. On the contrary, he admired her. When the person was far better than you, you could only admire him or her. Tang Aining was an unusually talented gambler, and Ma Jingshan simply relied on his luck. Compared with common people, he was excellent, but he was barely comparable to Ganing. Since Tang Aining is good at stone gambling, she should come today. Someone said, if she really comes, I don't think we have a chance to win good jade raw materials. Right, I think she better not come. Ha ha. Many people agreed. Although they also ached to meet the legendary Queen of Jade, they preferred to buy more jade raw materials with jade of high quality inside. They couldn't figure out her skills of stone gambling, but it was true that she was much better than them. Actually, even if Tang Aining was absent, it still wasn't very likely for them to find good jade raw materials. Oh, I noticed a girl named Ganing who won many jade raw materials and she bid a high price for each of them. It's probably a coincidence. Dot. They all believed that it was a coincidence, but Ma Jingshan had a different idea. He was curious about Gunning and Leng Shouting. Ma Jingshan didn't think that Gunning was able to pay for so many jade raw materials, because she was too young. I'm curious to know how many pieces of jade can be cut out of the pile of jade raw materials Gunning just won. No matter what, it's impossible for her to lose money. Right. Even though they didn't believe in Gunning's ability, they believed Ma Jingshan's choices. Chapter 1086 Bailey Zong Yin Gunning and Leng Shouting wandered on the street, then noticed Dong Fengzu and Wu Shanhu by accident in a nearby restaurant. Gunning had doubts that they might be practicing there in a discipline, so she wanted to find out more about them. Therefore, Gunning said to Leng Shouting, Shouting, I think the man and the woman over there could be those who are practicing there in a discipline. Why don't we go have a seat with them to see if we can find out more about them? Hearing that, Leng Shouting was surprised. They had just met another man of the evil practice yesterday, and they met those who were practicing in a discipline today. Leng Shouting trusted Gunning. Since Gunning thought it was very likely, he believed so. No problem, Leng Shouting said. Afterwards, Gunning and Leng Shouting walked into the restaurant. The table next to Dong Fengzu and Wu Shanhui was vacant, so Gunning and Leng Shouting sat there. Once they walked inside, Dong Fengzu saw them and recognized them. However, Gunning and Leng Shouting pretended that they didn't see them, and ordered two cups of coffee. Dong Fengzu was attracted to Leng Shouting's outstanding appearance like every normal woman, but she did nothing to bother him. Zhu, look at the young man at the next table. He's even more handsome than Bailey Zong Yin. He also has an air of power and nobility. I guess he must be a member of the high society in this world. Wu Shanhu said all of a sudden. Although Leng Shouting was much more attractive than him, Wu Shanhu wasn't jealous of him. He wasn't a mean person after all. Wu Shanhu didn't say it loudly, but Leng Shouting and Gunning were still able to hear it. Gunning immediately verified that they came from the cultivation world, because only people from the cultivation world would differentiate themselves from common human beings. The person named Bailey Zongyang that he just mentioned must be a member of the cultivation world too. Yeah, he indeed is more handsome than Bailey Zongyang, but unfortunately he's just a common human, Dong Fengzi said. They were totally different from common humans. In their eyes, a common human was inferior to them no matter how powerful or rich he was. Just like how gods and goddesses looked at common human beings, they all believed that they were superior to them. Oh, right. Why don't you like Bailey Zong Yin? I think he's a quality man, Wu Shanhu asked. The Bailey family was one of the four dominant families in the cultivation world, 
and it was actually more influential than the Dongfen family. Bailey Zongyun was universally acknowledged as an outstandingly handsome young man, and he was also the sole heir of the Bailey family. Countless women were attracted to him. Nevertheless, Bailey Zongyun only liked Dongfen Zhu, but Dongfen Zhu didn't like him, which Wu Shunhu couldn't understand. Well, I simply don't like him no matter how understanding he is. In addition, he chases me just because he thinks that I'm the only woman who matches him. He doesn't really like me, and he's a self-centered person, Dong Fengzi said. All right, let's go now. Dong Fengzi didn't want to talk about it. In fact, she did admire Bailey's Ongyang before, because he was too outstanding to be ignored in the cultivation world. However, when she found out the real reason why he chose her, she didn't like him anymore. Dong Fengzi and Wu Shanhu left after they finished their meal. While Ganing and Leng Shouting's coffee was just placed on the table. Shall we follow them? Leng Shouting asked. No need. We'll see them again at the auction tomorrow, Ganing said. Since they weren't common humans, it wouldn't be easy to follow them without being found out. That being the case, Ganing and Leng Shouting enjoyed their coffee in the restaurant. Because of Leng Shouting's outstanding appearance, many girls paid attention to him, but none of them came over to strike up a conversation with him. So Ganing didn't mind it. After finishing their coffee, Ganing and Leng Shouting went back to the hotel. Ganing received Master Leng's call on the way. Hi, girl Gu, how are you doing in Burma? Is Shouting taking good care of you? Master Leng said the second Ganing answered his call. Ganing felt touched that Master Leng cared about her. Grandpa Leng, I'm well, and Shouting is taking good care of me. We're good in Burma, Ganing said. Great. Master Leng laughed with happiness. Leng Shouting felt a little upset that Master Leng only cared about Ganing and didn't ask about him, but at the same time, he also felt happy that his grandfather liked his girlfriend. After hanging up the call with Master Leng, Ganing joked, Are you jealous of me? Leng Shouting squeezed Ganing's hand. Not at all. In Leng Shouting's eyes, Ganing was more important than himself. Ganing beamed, and said nothing. Dot. In the capital, Master Leng called Tang Haifeng next. Tang Haifeng was having a walk in the yard when his phone rang. He was surprised to see the caller's name. He thought that Master Leng must have found out about Ganing's relationship with Leng Shouting, and wondered what Master Leng would say about it. Chapter 1087 Engagement Although Tang Haifeng didn't think that Ganing was inferior to Leng Shouting, it was about his granddaughter's future happiness. So he was still slightly worried. Tang Haifeng picked up the call a few seconds later. He was worried, but didn't show it in his voice at all. Hi, Master Leng, what a surprise. Tang Haifeng said, Hi, Tang, what didn't you tell me earlier that your granddaughter is my grandson's girlfriend? Master Leng complained, Do you know how terrible it felt when I was worried that my grandson would stay single forever? Do you think my grandson isn't qualified to marry your granddaughter? Master Leng sounded a little annoyed, but he actually wasn't. Tang Haifeng understood it very well, so he wasn't displeased at all. Instead, he was relieved and excited. He didn't believe that Leng Shouting would stay single forever because countless women wanted to marry him. Leng Waiwei only said that because he thought that Ganing was very important. Master Leng. It isn't my fault. I always thought that you were aware of it. Tang Haifeng said. Hearing that, Master Leng complained again. Well, Shouting totally forgot me when he had a girlfriend. All right, since he has found himself a great girl, I can forgive him. To be honest with you, I already regard Ningling as my granddaughter-in-law but she hasn't reached the age of consent yet. I wish they could get married right now. Tang, why don't we let them get engaged first? Tang Haifeng was surprised to know that Leng Waiwei was so satisfied with Ganing. They had talked about the engagement before, and he approved of it too. We like shouting very much as well. Since they're deeply in love with each other, I think we can gather together some day to have a serious discussion about it. What do you think? Tang Haifeng asked, both of them couldn't wait, ha ha, ha ha, great. Leng Waiwei agreed, I'll fly to City B, and we can talk about it then. Leng Waiwei planned to visit the Tang family in person. See you. Tang Haifeng said with happiness, if Ganing and Leng Shouting were going to be engaged, the Leng family should visit the Tang family to make the proposal. It was the custom. After that, they hung up the pleasant call. Tang Haifeng then talked about it with Tang Yunhang and his wife. 
Tang Yanfan and Guman were still on their honeymoon, so they didn't interrupt them. They would be back home the day after tomorrow anyway. Tang Yanhang and his wife were also supportive, because they knew a happy marriage required the elder's approval. Dot. Leng Weiwe, on the other hand, kept it a secret from the other members of the Leng family. He was the most important figure in the Leng family, and Leng Shouting didn't get along with the other members of the family, so there was no need for him to share the news with them. He decided to visit the Tang family with Leng Yuanzhen's family at that time. Gunning and Leng Shouting had no idea that their grandfathers were planning to settle their engagement. The auction was held on the third day. The bids were closed yesterday and the day before yesterday, but they were all open that day. Bidders all gathered in the hall for the auction, and the jade would be sold to the highest bidder. There were two kinds of jade raw materials which were put out for the open bid. One was a complete jade raw material, while the other was partially cut jade raw material. It relied on a person's luck and skills to win money by bidding for the complete jade raw materials. As for the partially cut jade raw materials, there was a window which showed green on them, which meant it was highly possible to cut out jade from it. The results of the open bids would be revealed at the site. The winners of the jade raw materials also needed to get a clearance certificate to move them home. Without a clearance certificate, it would be illegal. The auction would begin at 12 p.m., but people all arrived at 10 a.m. There were 100 jade raw materials in all and they were directly placed in the hall for bidders to have a close look. Gunning had jade eyes, so she was able to see whether there was jade in the matter glance. Chapter 1088 Ignore Chizu Each of the bidders had to register first, then got a bidding paddle for the auction. Although only Gunning would attend the auction, Leng Shouting and the others also registered. Nobody could have a seat without registration and standing in the hall wasn't allowed. Bidders without an invitation letter were classified as common guests, and they could only have seats at the rear rows. Dot. When Gunning and her friends came to register, they met Chi Ziyu and his friends. Chi Ziyu and Tang Yaxin didn't dare show any dislike towards Gunning and Leng Shouting this time, but Ayumi Yamaguchi and Shoutam and Amina were still unkind. Hi, Lord Leng. It's so nice to meet you. I'm the marketing director of the Tang organization, Chi Ziyu. I'm sorry that I didn't realize it was you until yesterday. Chi Ziyu greeted Leng Shouting on his own initiative. Leng Shouting, however, only gave him a glance and said nothing. He remembered that Gunning's master was Tang Aining, who held a grudge against the Tang family and Chi Ziyu, so he had no good impression of them. He understood that Gunning was going to pay the Tang family and Chi Ziyu back. Dot. Cheesy felt utterly embarrassed when Leng Shouting ignored him. He didn't expect that Leng Shouting would directly ignore him, but even though he was mad, he didn't vent his anger. Tang Yaxin wanted to greet Leng Shouting too, but gave the idea up after Leng Shouting ignored Cheesy. If there was another man who dared to ignore Cheesy, she would argue with him, but she admired Leng Shouting, so she did nothing about it. Besides, she had also heard of Leng Shouting's cold character. So it wasn't strange that Chi Ziyu was ignored. Ayumi Yamaguchi, instead, mocked Leng Shouting, because she wasn't aware of his family background. How could you be so rude? Didn't you hear Ziyu's greeting? Hearing that, Chi Ziyu was scared and interrupted Ayumi Yamaguchi at once. Miss Yamaguchi, it's not a big deal. He said it in a hurry, so it sounded as if he was criticizing her. He clearly knew that Leng Shouting wasn't someone that Ayumi Yamaguchi and Shouta Minamino could mess with. Although the Minamino family was very influential in country R, it wasn't the most powerful family, while the Leng family was the most powerful family in this country. Ayumi Yamaguchi was angry when Chizu didn't side with her. How? Shouta Minamino, however realized that something wasn't right. Not only was Chi Ziyu quite respectful of this young man, but he was also nervous when Ayumi Yamaguchi interrupted them. It all proved that this young man wasn't an ordinary man. Ayumi, calm down. Although Shoutam and Amino liked Ayumi Yamaguchi and he tolerated her bad temper most of the time, it didn't mean that he would allow her to cause trouble. Hearing Shoutam and Amino's warning, Ayumi Yamaguchi curbed her anger. Lord Leng, I'm sorry. Miss Yamaguchi is a foreigner, and she doesn't know much about the situation here. Please don't mind it. Chizu apologized to Leng Shouting at once. Leng Shouting remained silent, and ignored him. He never liked people from country R. Besides, 
from the beginning to the end, the two people from country are kept causing them trouble. Gunning said to Leng Shouting at this time, let's go now, great, Leng Shouting said, then left with Gunning. When they walked away, Zabiing gave Ayumi Yamaguchi a glance of disdain and said, don't think you're superior to others, otherwise you will probably be killed without any hints. After that, she turned around with pride. Even if they didn't dare to annoy Leng Shouting, they couldn't afford the result if Zabiing was mad. Leng Shouting couldn't kill anybody he wanted to, but Zabiing could. It was super easy for a powerful munitioner to get rid of an enemy in Southeast Asia. Dot. Ayumi Yamaguchi was angry when Zabiing said that to her face. Zhu, who are they? Once Gunning and the others were gone. Shoutaman Amino asked Chizu, Lord Leng is the eldest grandson of the Leng family in the capital, and he's also the youngest major general in the military, Chizu said. What? Hearing that, both Ayumi Yamaguchi and Shoutaman Amino were shocked. They had heard of the number one family in the capital, and a major general was a very high level in the army. They were astonished by Leng Shouting's social status. Miss Yamaguchi, Please forgive me for being a little rude just then, Chizu said. It's fine, Shoutaman Amino said. He felt lucky that Chizu had stopped Ayumi Yamaguchi in time. Even though Shoutaman Amino's family was very influential in country R, he knew that he shouldn't offend the most powerful family in this country. Ayumi Yamaguchi, at the same time, felt quite regretful. Her family wasn't better than the Minamino family in country R so she absolutely had no intention to offend the Leng family. Dot. A short while later, Dong Fengzu and Wu Shanhui came. In the hall, all the people who were interested in jade raw materials were present. The hall was very large and could accommodate about 2,000 people. Chapter 1089 The auction begins. Gunning left with Leng Shouting and the others and went to find their seats. The seats were divided into four areas. A, B, C and D. Area A was VIP area, area B was VIP area, while both area C and area D were for common guests. Gunning came here as the boss of Colorful Jade Provider which was an influential jade company in City Teng, so she had a seat in area A. Zabiing and the others sat in the same area with her. In order of arrival, they sat in the back rows of area A, which didn't actually matter. Chizu and other people had seats in area O as well but they went to see the partially cut jade raw materials once they entered the hall, although they didn't know much about jade. They were interested in it. Dong Fengzu and Wu Shanhu didn't have an invitation letter, so they sat in area D. The auction would begin in 20 minutes, and many people began to sit in their seats. When Zhao Feng noticed Gunning, he walked towards her. Hi, Miss Gu, why aren't you going to look at the jade raw materials? Gunning smiled. I don't think it's necessary. Hearing that, Zhao Feng smiled too. He understood that it was easy for Gunning to get jade of high quality given her unbelievable ability. Afterwards, Zhao Feng went back to his seat in area B. Dot. All the guests went back to their seats when it neared 12 p.m. Chizu and the others walked to area A. None of them dared to be unkind to Gunning and her friends now. At 12 p.m., the auction began. On the stage, a beautiful young woman walked out in a red gown and her beauty stunned many people. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's annual jade auction in Burma. Now please allow me to introduce the rules. The hostess simply introduced the rules of the auction to the audience. In fact, the rules weren't complicated. All right, today's auction begins. Once the hostess made the announcement, all the information of Jade Raw Material Number 1 was shown on the big screen behind her. This Jade Raw Material had a window of green on it, so it was obviously expensive. It was about 83 kilograms, and the exposed jade was the best old pit glass jade because the diameter of the window was just as large as that of an ordinary cup, bidders couldn't know the type, size, or quality of the jade inside. However, it was very easy for Gunning to find out with the help of her jade eyes. In the jade raw material number one, there was a piece of jade of old pit glass type. Moreover, it was very large and accounted for two-thirds of the jade raw material. Its opening bid was a million dollars and the bid increment couldn't be less than $500,000. According to the size of the jade in it, Gunning thought that its price should be around 500 million yuan. However, 
because it was a partially cut jade raw material, other bidders might stop bidding when the price reached 200 million yuan, which was nearly 30 million dollars. They didn't know whether there was really jade inside, so it was highly risky. In most cases, the outer layer of a jade raw material could be very thick, so people tended to believe that the jade in it was small. Anyway, it was rare to see a bid of over 300 million yuan, 2 million dollars, 2.5 million dollars, 3 million dollars, dot, 20 million dollars. Before long, the price reached 20 million dollars, and the bidder was Dongfengzu. Although she didn't know how large the jade was in it, she wanted to have a try because it was a jade raw material of high quality. After the price reached 20 million dollars, fewer and fewer bidders continued to bid for it. Gunning remained silent till now. She planned to wait and bid at the last minute. Some people who were familiar with Gunning, however, hesitated to join the game. They subconsciously thought that there might be no jade in number one jade raw material or it wasn't worth the price. Gunning understood that she was affecting their behavior, but she didn't care about them. 24 million dollars. 24.5 million dollars. For now. Only Dongfengzu and a jewelry businessman were competing against each other. Once Dongfengzu made the bid of $24.5 million, the jewelry businessman stopped bidding. It was a very high price after all. $0.5 million equaled 166 million yuan. Even though the window showed green old pit glass jade, it didn't mean that there would be valuable jade inside. $25 million. Gunning finally made her bid. Hearing that, Jang Dikan and many other jewelry businessmen who kept glancing at Gunning got excited at once. Since Gunning was willing to offer a high price for it, they knew that there must be a very valuable jade inside. In that case, some of them began to bid for the jade raw material. Gunning actually felt a little uncomfortable because she knew that those jewelry businessmen did it on purpose. $25.5 million. $26 million. Dong Fengzi said. 26.5 million dollars, Gunning said. Dot. After several rounds, the other bidders all gave up, and only Dong Fengzu and Gunning were left in the game. Chapter 1090 Ma Jingshan, 29.5 million dollars, Dong Fengzu said. 30 million dollars, Gunning said. Dot. When the price reached 30 million dollars, Dong Fengzu gave up, because it was the highest price she was willing to offer. Besides, Gunning had no intention to stop bidding, and the price would only get higher and higher. Although she really wanted this jade raw material, she wasn't sure whether the jade in it was worth $30 million. Nobody was competing against Gunning now, so the hostess opened her mouth after waiting for a few seconds. $30 million once, twice. Any more bids? No one answered, and the hostess said, All right sold. Jade raw material number 1 now belongs to bidder A122. Gunning got it. It was a piece of old pit glass jade that was worth over 500 million yuan, and Gunning only paid 204 million yuan for it, which wasn't beyond her estimation. Jade raw material number 2 was shown on the screen next. It was also partially cut with a piece of water type jade inside but its size wasn't big. Therefore, Gunning didn't want to bid for it. Jade raw material number 3 wasn't cut open at all. There was a piece of jade inside, but its quality wasn't very good. So Gunning gave it up too. Gunning only wanted jade of high quality if it was a partially cut jade raw material. She didn't lack jade right now after all. Because Gunning didn't bid, Dong Fengzi successfully got two pieces of jade after dozens of jade raw materials were sold at this auction. Gunning wasn't aware that people from the cultivation world also needed the power of good jade to improve their inner discipline, so she thought that Dong Fengzi or Dong Fengzi's family was involved in the jewelry business. Without Zibing's interference, Shao Mino also won several pieces of jade. It was an official auction so Zibing couldn't cause trouble. Dot. Gunning waited for a long time, but there was still no jade of high quality, so she remained silent. Although there were many pieces of good jade at this auction, the bidders were all rich people, so the prices were very high. When the 18th jade draw material was shown on the screen, Gunning wanted it. She saw a piece of higher level jade in it. Its opening bid was $10,000 and the bid increment couldn't be less than $10,000. As time went by, 
the price rose to over a million dollars. Gunning didn't join the game at the beginning as usual. When the price increased to two million dollars, only a few bidders were left competing for it. When the price came to three million dollars, only two bidders were left. Everyone stopped bidding when the price became $3.6 million. But Gunning opened her mouth. $3.7 million. $3.8 million. $3.9 million. $4.2 million. Gunning said. Some people followed Gunning into the bidding, but still gave up in the end. As a result, Gunning got it. She did exactly the same thing in the following rounds once she found jade of high quality in the jade raw materials. Many bidders followed her, but none of them had enough money or courage to compete against her for the jade. The auction was divided into the first half and the second half. There were 50 jade raw materials sold in the first half, which took almost two hours. Afterwards, they had a break of half an hour before the second half began. During the first half of this auction, Gunning got three partially cut jade raw materials and three complete jade raw materials. She was probably the one who won the most valuable jade. Dong Fengzi won four partially cut jade raw materials. Xiaotamin Amino had three partially cut jade raw materials. Zhang Dikin only had one partially cut jade raw material and two complete jade raw materials. And Zhao Feng had a partially cut jade raw material and a complete jade raw material. Some of the other bidders also got some valuable jade raw materials. There were far more bidders than jade raw materials at this auction, so it wasn't easy to win more than two jade raw materials per person. Dot. The host of the auction provided desserts, fruit, and drinks for the guests at the restaurant next door, and people could have as much as they wanted. All the bidders were rich people, so the restaurant was luxurious too. Zhang Dikan, Zhao Fing and others walked to Gunning once the first half was over. They kindly greeted each other and chatted casually. At this moment, Ma Jing Shan also walked towards Gunning followed by other members of his family. Zhang Dikan, Zhao Fing and Ma Jingshan were very familiar with one another. Both Zhang Dikan and Ma Jingshan were members of the Jade Association, so they often met at different meetings. Zhao Fing was a jewelry businessman and he showed up often at meetings where jewelry businessmen gathered together. Therefore, Zhao Fing and Zhang Dikan weren't strangers. In addition, Zhao Fing had visited the Ma family's jade raw material shop many times before, so he and Ma Jingshan weren't strangers either. Hi, Mr. Ma, nice to see you again. Zhang Dikan, Zhang Binxing and Zhao Fing greeted Ma Jingshan. Nice to meet you too, everyone. Ma Jingshan was also a very kind man. His sight fell on Gunning then, Miss Gu, nice to see you. I'm the vice president of the Jade Association in Province Yan and my name's Ma Jingshan. I can see that you're very talented at stone gambling. Ma Jingshan didn't take Gunning lightly just because she was young, because he knew that Gunning wasn't an ordinary girl. My honor to meet you here, Mr. Ma, Gunning said with a smile. 